right. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Here with me is Steve Schwartz from the LSAT Unplugged. If you don't know, he has a YouTube channel and a podcast, and he also has a blog, the LSAT Blog. I can't tell you enough how valuable this resource was for me when I first started out with studying this giant beast of the LSAT. Like, he has so many resources, like your schedules and like advice from past uh, LSAT test takers and how they approach the test. So I absolutely recommend that it is free. And he also has resources too that you could email him and he will be happy to help you figure that out. But today we'll be talking about how to approach the LSAT and any advice he has in the whole studying process and what to really consider when it comes to picking the test. So Steve, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, F.A. So I've been teaching the LSAT for a long time now, nearly 15 years, and I can't believe it's been that long. I got into this back when I was studying for the LSAT myself, because no one really gets into this for fun. I was thinking of law school, and it would end up being a much bigger struggle than I thought it would be just to conquer the LSAT itself. I started off around a 152, and I'd gone to an Ivy League undergrad. I wanted to go to a top 14 law school, and so that was pretty discouraging, and it took me actually an entire year before I was able to gradually climb my way up from the low 150s to ultimately getting a 175 on test day. And through that process, I became extremely obsessed with this exam, wanting to dissect it, know how it's constructed, and then help others do the same. So I started helping my fellow college students, friends from high school with the exam, and then it kind of just snowballed from there. I made the website, the LSAT blog, where I've published over a thousand articles on every aspect of LSAT and law school admissions. And then more recently, over the past year or so, I've also focused on YouTube and podcasts. So I have the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel, as well as the LSAT Unplugged podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and pretty much everywhere else. And F.A., thanks for having me. I'm really glad to hear that the LSAT blog site helped you back in your journey. And I'm happy to share my advice with your audience on the Eda Esquire YouTube channel. Absolutely. Well, we'll just get right into it then. So when it comes to the LSAT, I know now that the format has changed, how do you expect or would you like students to go about this process? Yeah, sure. So the LSAT has gone digital this year, meaning that it's no longer paper and pencil format. It is on a tablet, specifically a Microsoft Surface Go 10-inch tablet. This change is only in North America. It has not yet spread to other parts of the world yet. They're starting it off here first. And so I would recommend mainly that students, if they can, get a tablet or borrow one for at least a couple of timed sit downs with the exam. You don't have to get that Microsoft tablet specifically. Any tablet will do a Samsung, an iPad, or you could buy an Amazon Fire HD 10 for about $150 and then return it after the exam if you decide that it's not for you. But that's just one way you could practice simulating the test. You could also, if you have access to the PDFs of old exams, you could have those up on your computer screen and then use your scratch paper to the side you will get a booklet of about 12 to 14 pages. And so you can't draw freehand on the tablet, but you can do all that work on the scratch paper. So treat your books like they're screens. Don't write on them. Just do your work on this side. That's the biggest advice I would have on this. Nice. Well, given that the LSAT is a huge beast and it can get daunting and it took you a year to prepare, for me, it took me about two years to find like, get to the score that I wanted, how do you, like, at what point do you think students should start preparing for the LSAT? Yeah, great question. I would suggest, you know, earlier rather than later, of course, which is always the advice, right? People typically want to take two to three months, but honestly, it takes much longer than that to achieve your fullest potential. And my goal for you is that it doesn't take you an entire year or two like it took us, but that it would take at least five to six months, I think is a reasonable timeline to achieve your fullest potential, to achieve your maximal score. And if you think about it, that's actually not crazy because you spend four years or so earning your undergraduate GPA, but your LSAT score weighs more heavily. So why would you want to cram it in only a month or two? It's worth investing the time, given that it's the number one most important factor in the law school admission process. So if you're planning to apply in the fall, I would suggest ideally sitting at least once in the spring, and then that way you have time to retake it if you need to. And the LSAT's being offered more frequently than ever before, so there's always a chance to retake down the line. And given that there's a limit on how many times uh, the test taker can retake, how would you suggest like, they spread that out and really focus on what exam 
risks to take? Sure. So the LSAT new retake limits are that you can only take it three times in one admission cycle, five times in a five-year period, and seven times for life. And also, if you get a 180, there's a limit on that too, because they don't see the point really. But this retake limit ultimately doesn't necessarily have to affect that many people because you can always withdraw before the exam, even the day before, and that does not count as a take. But if you take it and cancel, that will count as a take. And so my advice is pretty much the same as it always has been, which is don't take it until you feel confident that you're going to be ready for it. And if you're not feeling confident, withdraw or postpone. But you can prepare to be ready by your test date if you just follow what I consider a, a pretty streamlined five-step approach to mastering the exam, which is I call the laser approach to studying. Learning, accuracy, sections, exams, and review. Laser which basically means learning is the theory, doing or just reading textbooks, watching videos, learning the basics. Accuracy is doing, individual, is, is doing individual questions by type to master the basics. Sections is full sections of 35 minutes. Exams and endurance are full length five section exams. And review is really looking at your mistakes. And I can go into more depth on those, but that process, if you just follow it step by step, you'll be ready by test day, but also allow yourself enough time. So how often do you think uh, students should be preparing, like they're taking full long prep tests? I would suggest on average one timed exam per week, but that's stage four in the process. So first, and students rush ahead to do the exams, first they should focus on learning, accuracy, and individual sections. Once they've got a strong foundation, then they can bring it all together with full length timed exams. I would recommend ideally, taking 10 timed exams, full length five sections prior to test day. And so you might spread that out, those out over two and a half months, or maybe you do two a week over the course of one month. But I wouldn't do exams every single day or five a week because that just leads to burnout. And how would you recommend when, so after all of the processes to go into review, because that's also a very essential part of preparing for the test. I would review after every single timed exam or even every single timed section. And that review process is really looking at your mistakes, specifically if your mistake, let's say logical reasoning, was your mistake in the stimulus, was it in the question stem, or was it in the choices? If it was in the stimulus, was it about the method of reasoning or about not properly identifying the evidence or conclusion or other parts of the argument? If it was in the question stem, Maybe it was unfamiliar wording, but of course you do have to know what the question type is. And if it was in the choices, what was tempting about the wrong answer that made you pick it or made you consider it and what ultimately makes it wrong? And if it was about the right answer, what was discouraging about the right answer that pushed you away from it and what ultimately makes it correct? And you actually want to write this down in a notebook or talk it out with a friend or a study partner or a coach or a tutor, but really articulating it forces you to engage deeper in your thought process. Because it's too easy to just look at the correct answer and say, I get it now and move on. Or if you're reading explanation, say, nod your head and say, that makes sense. But if you actually articulate it yourself, you're forcing yourself to prove that you understand it. And do you have any advice on how to approach each, sec each section? Because I know they all come with their own difficulties. Yeah, I would say most students should start with games because it's the most daunting or intimidating at first. But games actually is the most learnable section. I would focus on the easiest order in games, then the moderate order in games, then the toughest order in games, same for grouping. So easy to difficult within each category. Then for logical reasoning, do those by type from easier types through harder types. So an easier type might be must be true or, or most strongly supported. Tougher would be parallel reasoning, for example. And then for reading comprehension, the biggest advice I would give is process of elimination on the questions because they're really good at making the right answers seem unappealing. And then for the passage itself, as always, focus on the structure of the arguments in the passages, not the details. And when it comes to developing a schedule for actually studying, how would you suggest students do that for those still in college, for those out of college and probably just waiting for the application process to like come and go and then full-time work it? Yeah, sure. So the general study program I recommend is laid out in my study plans. I have free week-by-week -week ones as well as detailed day-by-day -day ones on my website, the LSAT blog. 
and they follow that five step approach I mentioned laser learning, accuracy, sections, exams, and review. And so I've got these timelines where if you're studying over a three month period, there's a schedule following that process. If you're studying over a six month period, there's a schedule following that process. As for what your schedule looks like week to week, obviously it will vary. I recommend a minimum of 10 to 15 hours per week on this exam. And I do recommend taking off days for most people because I don't want you to burn out, but you don't want to go too long without touching the books either. Now, as for those who are working or in school, it's obviously tougher to carve out the time than if you're doing nothing but studying. But I would recommend if you're in college, treating it like a six credit class at minimum, blocking off time in your schedule to work on it every single week. And then if you're working, carve out time before work, during lunch, after work. And I recommend trying to do less of your studying at home and more in your workplace or at a, a coffee shop nearby. Because once you get home, it's too easy to get into your PJs and, and tune out from the studying. But if you can get to work early and find a conference room at work or find a coffee shop nearby while you're in your work attire and while you're in a productive mindset, you're much more likely to make it happen. Well, thank you, Steve. It's great having you here with us. Um, don't forget his website is the LSAT blog. He has a YouTube channel, the LSAT Unplugged, and a podcast, LSAT Unplugged. It was great having you here. You guys can go follow him on his channel and his podcast and like go use the LSAT blog. It is fantastic. And you have a schedule that is free. Like everybody needs a schedule. So yeah, absolutely amazing. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Effie.